Okay, we are slowly coming to the end of this tutorial. So Dennis is our last speaker. Uh, while he is getting ready, I would like to point out that most of the things that I talked about in my portion are now very well documented that would be addressing Adrian's point uh, in this book. So the book is uh, Solaris Application Programming. It just came out. Uh, if you're interested in just you know, looking through it, you know, flipping the pages, be my guest. You can buy this book on Amazon.com uh, or any other place where books get sold. So I'm leaving it right here. And again, we have one cool toy and the next cool toy that we will be playing with at the end of this presentation. So stick around. Okay. So, can you hear me? Uh, excellent. So uh, my name is Dennis, and I'm a software developer in a two years old startup company specialized in the uh, area of uh, algorithmic trading. That is, uh, we allow people to write their code uh, to trade on the real market, and we take uh, for us uh, all the burden of market connectivity and stuff like that. And probably, as every other st startup company, we hope to deliver the fastest, the most scalable, and most robust and reliable software. Uh, our system is built around a so-called strategy engine, which is a piece of software which is connected to the uh, market venues through the set of uh, software adapters. And most important, it exposes a kind of API that uh, customers may use to write uh, their own programs to trade. So uh, when they write their code, and this is a pure C++, uh, the result is a kind of a shared library, which is loaded into the, into the strategy engine. And uh, what people can actually program is, for instance, uh, when the market change, for instance, a price drops for some kind of share, you can uh, issue a number of uh, requests, like uh, to trade something or to withdraw your order you previously sent. And uh, this strategy engine is uh, it's highly scalable in, in terms it, it use mo it's very multi-threaded. It has a lot of threads, and it can be distributed across the few hosts. Um, the first problem we faced when we built our company is what operating system to choose, to deploy, and to build our software, and to run out our software, what we can actually recommend to our customers. And uh, it was a tough choice. Um, the company we pre previously worked on had, uh, well, pretty good experience with Solaris on Spark platform. And, uh, we had some software running on Linux. And actually, uh, when we started thinking about that, our choice was between Linux and Solaris. And uh, for Solaris, it was primarily Intel platform because our customers said that they want a cheap software that they can uh, simply build a kind of clusters uh, for, you know, like nothing. And, uh, Spark hardware is simply not, uh, it's too expensive for them. So uh, we knew that Solaris has a fairly good kernel. Uh, they spent a lot of time uh, tuning it, and they uh, had experience for about 20 years of multiprocessor development, but Linux uh, also getting pretty, pretty fast up to speed. Probably it's already there, I'm not sure. Um, we need a sta stable API. We have wanted to upgrade um, our service quick, fast, and robust. And we don't want to have any problems with uh, API incompatibilities. This is where Linux is not as good. Uh, we had experience of supporting uh, a, a, Lin a Linux distribution in the past. And uh, since we are a commercial organization, uh, we had to choose one of the commercial Linux distributions just simply to get the support for the software. It was a Red Hat Linux. 
and we had problems because uh, it's constantly like uh, you would like to have some patch in the kernel. It's not uh, in the red hell. Uh, in excuse me, what you know, in the red hat, and uh, it's like the, it never happens until the next release of Red Hat is out, and it's not simply not the way we can uh, we can work with. Um, we opted for 64-bit development from the very beginning just because we need a lot of memory. And uh, we were looking at the development tools. We didn't know about system tap at that time. But otherwise, uh, both systems uh, looked quite comparable. Uh, we wanted a reliable file system, uh, and preferably with the possibility to make its backups. Uh, here, we believe Solaris has a huge advantage com when compared to Linux, because uh, ZFS not only quite, fa quite fast and uh, provides uh, for backups with their snapshots, it also uh, allows to configure uh, RAID systems quite easily, uh, something uh, that was quite hard for us in, in the previous life. And finally, but uh, it was the most important point for us. We needed a reliable, good scheduler. And this is where uh, we had a surprise. Uh, when uh, testing this, we wrote a few tests. One of uh, the tests was a very simple test. Uh, uh, two programs on different hosts exchange with the data. And the data with a message size of uh, what we believed is an average order size. Uh, very simple test. Uh, we had it uh, running a few times every day. And uh, this chart actually depicts uh, the results. The red line is how Solaris behaves. Uh, the blue one is how Linux. And here you see uh, this is a one week time frame. Uh, sorry, two weeks time frame. And uh, on the fifth day, for whatever reasons, uh, Linux somehow degraded by a factor of two. Actually, uh, I'm not going to say that uh, Linux is bad or Solaris is good or something else, uh, but I think this is what makes uh, a difference between commercial and uh, other development. That is, uh, we want to make something work fast and reliable. We simply have no resources to research what happened here. We tried uh, a couple of network conf configurations. We tried to tune the kernel. But uh, after a month, uh, we simply decided Linux not, is not for us. So our reference platform is Solaris 10, uh, which is running on some fire 4150 with uh, ZFS. Uh, but also in-house, we have uh, a few other platforms that are running. So our software compiles on a few platforms, including 